Hello everybody, welcome back. We are going to talk about 3.0 today and discuss some new features that were revealed in the subscribers town hall earlier this week by Chris Roberts and some of the developers, more specifically Erin Roberts, Todd Puppy and Tony Zurovec. Not all of these features are new, we knew that exist already, we knew that we will get these features with 3.0 but there are a lot more details about them right now and it is very interesting to discuss them because they give us a much clearer view of 3.0 and what is waiting for us in the future in this amazing patch that will change Star Citizen as we know it. Before we go ahead and start talking about these features and about 3.0 in general, we have some other good news, great news to talk about that have to do with 2.6.1 patch. A patch that was revealed a couple of weeks ago with a newsletter and it is now coming. During our last talk, I had mentioned that I'm really waiting for 3.0 schedule report, the internal schedule report that CIG is sharing with us, started sharing with us with the 2.6 update, a brilliant move in my opinion that help us join, that help us participate in the developing process of Star Citizen even more. We didn't get 3.0 schedule report which is kind of logical since it is still some months away but we did get the 2.6.1 patch schedule report and we now have a date. This new patch is scheduled for release on February 16th this year obviously and these are great news in my opinion. Of course we have to understand that this schedule report is an estimate, is a name. It will probably be delayed so we will probably not get it on February 16th but we might get it as well. The aim for the PTU for this little patch is on February 6th so if everything goes well we will have in three weeks from now the live version of 2.6.1 which is intended to be a bug fixing polish patch rather than a larger content patch. Now why you should be excited about 2.6.1? Well mainly because it will fix the bugs that exist in Star Marine and Arena Commander and it will bring improvements to the Arena Commander and Star Marine. There will be some weapon balance on Star Marine. I personally want to see all the bugs away, all the bugs uh, being deleted that will make my life a lot better, that will make me really happy. And there are some interesting changes scheduled for the Arena Commander. First of all, there are some changes on the projectile speeds of the weapons. We have talked about the projectile speeds of all the weapons in Star Citizen so far. This change will help create more loadouts, it will give us more freedom. The projectile speeds of the weapons will be changed in such a way that it will be possible to create much better loadouts. I personally like this change, I can't wait for it, I can't wait to test a lot more loadouts with weapons that will uh, fit together well and will be possible to have a lot more fun. But that's not the only change regarding the Arena Commander and of course the Persistent Universe and Star Citizen in general, the SEM speeds are going to change again. I'm really happy about it, I think there needs to be an increase on the SCM speeds and I understand that CIG is going to increase them a bit in order to test them and hopefully have a much better feeling flying and fighting with our ships. I am even happier because from these little parts it is obvious that CIG is listening to the community and it's taking our suggestions into consideration. And the great news don't stop here, after 2.6.1 we will get another new patch that was revealed on this week's newsletter, 2.6.2 that will include the mega map feature, a feature that will make transitions inside the game from one module to another much easier, will allow players to connect seamlessly to different multiplayer matches or jump into a single player game mode without having to load a level every time. It will make our life easier, it will be a very good update and it will also bring multi-region game servers, something that I have been waiting for so long and everybody else outside of the US have been waiting for so long. This is going to improve our gameplay, this is going to improve Star Citizen for a lot of us and I'm really excited about it. 
I was really waiting for these servers. I was really hoping we will get them soon. And these all changes are going to happen thanks to the move to the Amazon's AWS. It is obvious that these patch and of course every kind of patch that will follow after 2.6.2 are preparing Star Citizen for 3.0 and although we didn't get a scheduled report for 3.0 I really hope that with these changes we are getting closer to a March or April 3.0 release date. Nothing sure, nothing can be sure with developing a game but I'm really positive about uh, March April release date for 3.0. We will have to wait and see. Let's go ahead now and discuss some of the 3.0 features starting with what else of course but the planets. CIG is building some very beautiful and fascinating planets with a variety of ecosystems that will provide us with a ton of stuff to do and explore but there will be planets that will have a certain unique ecosystem that will give us a certain unique look and feeling. An example of this is Microtech, one of the standard planets, that is a snowy planet, a frozen planet, there is snow everywhere, or Hearthstone, another standard planet that we will get with 3.0, that is a heavily industrialized world run by a dystopian society. The goal with these unique environments, and of course weather, weather and conditions on the different planets in the star citizen universe, will create a lot of opportunities, will make exploration a lot more challenging. But it is also CAG's way to put some limiting factors for players, so if you want to visit Microtech, for example, where there is extreme cold, you will need specialized gear, you will need to have a suit that will help you survive in that specific environment. And this goes of course for every other plan, for every other unique environment. There are certain hits of survival gameplay with this feature, and although I'm not very fond of survival games, of survival games that exist until now, it all depends on how well this feature is implemented. From what CAG has shown to us, they put passion in every little detail, they try to make perfect every little day, as long as it takes, so I really hope that it will be a nice addition to the game. This could create some very interesting opportunities, maintaining your power, your life support, making sure that you will not run out of power or oxygen, trying to stay alive, and if you crash, for example, on an inhospital planet, on a planet with a hostile environment, you should try to stay alive until help arrive, you should try to survive until that happens. It is definitely a very nice idea, it sounds nice, but we will have to see it implemented in order to judge it properly. Another important note from this discussion had to do with disconnects and in general how the game will behave when you log out. So if you disconnect, your character and ship will persist on the PU for a while in order to give you the opportunity to log back in and continue playing. Now, if you were on a multi-cruise ship with other players, your character will persist as long as other players exist in the game. If everybody logs out or disconnects at the same time, then the ship, again, the multi-cruise ship, will persist for a while and then disappear. The game will then save your location, so when you want to return, you will be at the same spot. This is also why we have beds in ships, so you can go there lay down, log out, and save your location. And when you return, you will be back at your position and you can continue exploring, you can continue fighting NPC or whatever else you were doing. I understand that these news are not very good for people with not very good connections and that if you disconnect often, then you might be in trouble more often. And trust me, I've been there, it sucks disconnecting, but this feature is very important because it deals with combat loggers. People that use disconnection, people that get out of the game in order to avoid dying in a fight, in order to manipulate the game in that way. And it is very important that CAG is thinking of this in order to fight it, in order to not allow people, players like this, to ruin our experience. It is also creating the opportunity for the crew of multi-crew ships, for organizations, 
to continue traveling, to continue working towards a certain goal. So, for example, if you are playing on a multi-crew ship with some other members, you can decide to stay for a couple of hours, play, then log out, someone else from your crew will continue playing, and when you will log back into the game, you will have traveled far away, you will have continued your journey, you will have continued doing what you were doing, and you will be closer to your destination. This is a quite revolutionary feature that we haven't seen in other games, and it helps with teamwork, it promotes teamwork, and it promotes the existence of organizations, the clans of Star Citizen, and builds trust. Trust is going to be very important because you do want to know who is in the same ship with you. You do want to know who is running your ship when you are asleep, when you are not in the game. Just because someone is on your ship doesn't mean, though, that they take control of the ship. You control the ship, and as the owner, you will have the last word on what everybody on the ship can do. You can assign permissions, you can assign roles, and decide who will be on charge when you are not there. There will be much better security in the future. It will not be easy for someone to steal your ship, but the possibility is still over there. So if someone manages to steal your ship, that ship will be tagged as stolen. And if someone else scans it, he can see that it is stolen and he can attack them. Bounty hunters, law enforcers, this is a great opportunity for them. This creates gameplay again. And there will always be black markets where you can go and offload the stolen ship. Volta cruise ships will also change, will be tougher, stronger. Tanker will have more armor, more shields and more power. Crew is going to be very important. You will want to have a crew that you can trust, but also good NPC crew. And this is because it provides an extra layer of defense. If someone boards your ship, they will have to fight the NPC, then they will have to fight you. You will be more secure in space. From this feature, to be honest, all I understand is that espionage and organization infiltration is going to be a nightmare for most of the organizations in the persistent universe. Something else that we have to mention is that if you are not online, but your character is on a multi-crew ship, and that ship is destroyed, then your character will also die, and you will wake up on the nearest safe zone. Some more interesting features that we can mention have to do with the possibility to play an Ellen Ray sometime later in the future. There are plans for an update, for an expansion, but that's uh, nowhere near. Let's uh, see 3.0 first, and then after the release of the game, we can start discussing about Ellen Races. But it is really nice that CIG is already thinking about the possibility to play Ellen Races, and this will probably, when it happens, will introduce more currencies in the game. Something that will create some opportunities for arbitrage, maybe? An extra way to make profit? Very interesting thought, but it's uh, nowhere near 3.0 or after the release of the game. And of course there was mention about service vehicles. We have talked about service vehicles before. This is pretty much the way that players can create their own content. They can create their own missions. It will be very helpful, extra helpful if you need help, if you need assistance, if you need to refuel and you can have some filters in order to decide which one of the players nearby or somewhere far away can get your message. So if you need to have something done by another player or if you need help, you need to refuel your ship, you can set the distress beacon, you can ask for players to come refuel you, you can ask for the price, you can offer a pay. It will be quite interesting, it will be an opportunity to create missions and offer them to other players. But of course, despite the fact that filters will exist and you can choose the reputation of the players that can accept your message. There will always be the possibility for pirates and criminals to intercept your message and come and kill you. So be careful and never run out of fuel out there. Another thing quite important if you ask me is that combo nets on your ship will have a certain age and will have wear and you will have to maintain them. It will be possible to break and you will have to fix them. This is 
especially interesting for multi-crew ships where you have crew and dedicated people or NPC for that kind of jobs. It will also be very interesting if you are in a fight, if you are fighting other players and you are having a malfunction, if you need to repair your ship, this will give you the opportunity to last longer. Definitely a great addition, definitely a great feature in the game. This was everything I wanted to talk about 3.0. I really can't wait for this update. I really can't wait for this part. It will change Star Citizen. It will be the start of Star Citizen, in my opinion, as a multiplayer game, as an MMO, and it will be great for all of us. The next important milestone is, of course, 2.6.1 that will make Star Marine and Arena Commander gameplay much better and 2.6.2 that will add multi-region servers a much anticipated feature like always i would love to hear what you think of 3.0 and these latest details we got from cig chris roberts and the developers and of course 2.6.1 and 2.6.2 thank you very much for joining me if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more i am squid of love and i will see you around the verse bye bye